dragons take to the battlefield in search of power. Generals have troops strategically placed while the dragon needs no army, instead opting to rain destruction from the skies. Just before the battle begins, we see a rare sight, the Dragon Bond. Now this general and dragon have teamed up and the rest of the players have a whole new problem on their hands. This is Dragon Bond Lords of Valor, which was designed by Alessio Cavatore and Jack Cesar and published by Draco Studios and River Force Limited, who sponsored this video. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Murphy of the Brothers Murph, and I'm here with Board Game Geek. Now it's time to get some troops down to the map, but before we do that, let's show you how to play Dragon Bond Lords of Valor. In Dragon Bond Lords of Valor, one to four players take on the roles of either one of two generals commanding troops or one of the dragons who are fierce enough all on their own. Players will use action cards to carry out actions such as moving around the board, attacking opponents, and trying to gain power from the board and their opponents in a race to 10 total power. Before we teach you how to play, keep in mind that this is a prototype, so components and rules may change in the final version of this game. But before we learn all about the possible actions and differences between the generals and dragons, let's go over the setup. Begin by placing the board in the center of the table. Take the upgrade cards and shuffle them, placing the deck next to the board, dealing out six cards. Shuffle the deck of event cards and place it in the indicated space on the central board. Each player then chooses to play as a general, Alaria or Tavaria, or a dragon, Magnifex or Fulgan, and takes the appropriate player board. Each player then takes their dragon bond card, placing it on the top right corner of their player board, and takes their action and valid cards pertaining to their general or dragon. Players must be arranged alternating from general to dragon going around the table. Players each place their general or dragon on their starting regions, with Tavaria going to the trade road, Fulgan to Yasval, Alaria on Alaria, and Magnifex on the lower Primalian range. General players will also place one friendly infantry, cavalry, and ranged unit on their starting region and take the region card matching their starting region. Each non-faces player takes their Vala card and shuffles them forming a deck which is placed on their player board. Finally, place a power token and one neutral unit on each non-starting region on the board. All remaining tokens and wound markers are placed next to the board. Give the initiative token to the last player to watch a movie featuring a dragon. If playing with less than four players, each general or dragon not controlled by a real player will be a faceless character controlled by the game. For each faceless player, flip over the player board to the AI side and take just the action deck for that general or dragon. Shuffle the action cards and place them on the faceless player board, leaving their valor cards in the box. The general or dragon figures and troops are still placed on the map as usual. Okay, so we have the map populated with places of power and already troops are on the board and ready to move. Each round has three phases, the planning phase, the resolution phase, and the cleanup phase. Players will go round and round trying to collect 10 power and the game will end when someone has accomplished this goal or when the event deck has run out, at which point the player with the most power wins. So let's dive into how a round will play out. Each round begins with the planning phase. Here players will take turns adding action cards to a collective stack of cards which will determine the order in which actions carry out. First, an event card is placed face down within reach of all players. Next, the player with the initiative token places an action or region card face down from their hand onto the action stack. Play then continues clockwise around with each player adding an action or region card to the collective pile one at a time. This continues until a player chooses to pass by not placing a card onto the action stack. If a player has no cards left in their hand, they must pass. Once a player passes, they immediately take the initiative token if they didn't have it already. If they already possess the initiative token, they pass it to another non-faceless player. This ends the planning phase and a second event card is added to the top of the action card stack. If playing with faceless players, they simply play an action card from the top of their stack of cards and never pass, nor can they ever gain the initiative token. If they run out of cards, simply skip their turn with play continuing until a real player decides to pass. Next comes a resolution phase where players will take actions according to the cards played during the planning phase. The player with the initiative token takes the action stack and flips it over being careful not to change the order of the cards. The players then resolve each card in order beginning with the first event. After each card has been resolved, it is discarded in the case of event cards or handed back to the player the card belongs to in the case of action cards. If it is an event card, simply follow the instructions listed on that card. Often event cards will add more power tokens to different regions, so be sure to change the board state as necessary. If the card drawn from the stack is an action card, it will be carried out by the owner of that card. Each action card will have glyphs that pertain to that particular player's board, and players may reference their board at any time for descriptions of their actions. Glyphs are located in the bottom left of the card and are carried out in order from top to bottom. Once an action card is played, it is returned to the owner's hand to be used in a future round. Action cards for general players will have glyphs showing actions for Assault, Deploy, Harvest, and Vala. 
When carrying out an assault action, first choose a region to be the battlefield. The active player may then move any number of their units from adjacent regions and city regions connected by sea to the battlefield, and then combat will be initiated. Anytime an action refers to units, it counts all three types of units controlled by a general player and the general themselves. To initiate combat, the active player will choose a target player or neutral units in the region designated as the battlefield. Next, the active player rolls dice equal to their combat value. A general player's combat value is equal to the amount of units in that region, plus one if they have at least one of each type of unit, and plus one if their general is in that region. A dragon player will have a combat value equal to the highest number not covered up by a wound token on the wound track. Combat dice show blank sides, standard hits, and critical hits. Once the attacking player has their combat value, they roll dice checking for critical hits. If they roll any critical hits, one wound is immediately dealt for each critical hit rolled. If a general player takes a wound, they lose one of their units in the region the battle is taking place in. If all friendly units have been removed and only a general figure remains, they lose one power to their opponent and must retreat. If a dragon gains a wound, they take a wound marker from the supply and place it on their player board, which reduces that dragon's power. If a dragon's wound track is full, the attacking player can steal one power from the dragon, and then the dragon must retreat. If the attacking player had to cross a mountain to get to the battlefield region, or if the defending player is in a region with a city, they may ignore one hit caused by an attack whether it be a critical or standard hit. If the defending player uses a city to ignore a hit, that city is then discarded. Be advised, however, that dragons gain no defense benefit from being in a city, however they do gain the natural defenses from the mountain. Once the defending player has received wounds from any critical hits, they must choose to counterattack or retreat. If they retreat, they move out of the region to an adjacent one. Generals and their units must move out of the region to an adjacent controlled region that contains their troops or one that is uncontrolled. They may also retreat to a neutral region containing neutral units. Note that a dragon does not count as a unit, and a general player may retreat to a region containing a dragon. This may create a dragon bond, more on that later. A dragon must simply choose an adjacent region to retreat to from the battlefield. If a general or units cannot retreat to an adjacent region, all units are removed from the board and that player's general is moved to the nearest friendly region with their units. If there are no friendly regions present on the board, that general is eliminated from the game. In this case, the game ends immediately and the winner will be the player with the most points at that time. If a player chooses to retreat, they avoid any losses from standard hits, but critical hits will still deal wounds at the time they are rolled. If the defending player chooses to counterattack, they calculate their combat value after critical hits have taken effect, following the same process as before. The defending player then rolls, instantly dealing out wounds for any critical and standard hits, and then the defending player suffers wounds from the standard hits rolled by the attacking player, even if no attacking units remain in that region. Once a counterattack has been carried out, if there are enemy units or dragons remaining in the region, the attacking player must choose to initiate combat again or retreat. If they choose to attack again, the same process is carried out with a potentially different combat value if the attacking player suffered losses. The attacking player may instead retreat. Combat continues until only one player remains in the region either through combat itself, removing all their opponent's player pieces, or the defending or attacking player retreats. Other actions for the general players include deploy, which allows the active player to move up to four of their units to adjacent uncontrolled or friendly regions. If there is a region containing a city, those units may be moved to a connected city region by sea. The harvest action allows the active general player to collect power from each region that doesn't contain a dragon equal to the number of units in that region. Keep in mind, there must be power tokens in that region in order to harvest power there. General players will also gain region cards for regions they control on the board, which may be played in addition to their action cards during the planning phase. When a region card is played, the general player controlling that region may carry out three different actions, all of which are described on the central board. First, they may upgrade one of their three types of units. That player may choose any one of the six available upgrades so long as the upgrade region matches a region they control and places on their player board on the space pertaining to that type of unit. A general player may replace an upgrade for a type of unit if there is already one present on their board. The associated unit will have the upgraded ability on top of providing its normal combat value. For example, this upgrade card makes each critical hit rolled count as three standard hits when using ranged units. Each type of unit may have an upgrade on it and can be replaced as needed. Region cards also have their reinforce action, which allows a general player who controls the region to add a unit of their choice to the region and any adjacent regions they control. If the region is uncontrolled or neutral, two units are added to that region instead. Finally, region cards contain the fortify action, and if the region in question doesn't have a city, the controlling player places a city in that region. The dragon players have actions and abilities that work slightly differently, especially as they do not have units to control and move around the board. The dragon has glyphs for the actions Wrath, Soar, Horde, and they too have Vala actions. They also have the ability to ignore the glyphs on a card and can instead heal one wound, removing a wound token from the wound track, and if they are fully damaged, they must take a rest and recovery action, 
healing up to two wounds while ignoring all glyphs on their action card. When taking the Wrath action, they may move their dragon to an adjacent region and then initiate combat in their region. If they or a general player fight a faceless player or neutral unit, the player on the active player's right will calculate combat value and roll for the non-human player. Note that neutral units and faceless players will never retreat if they have the option not to. When a dragon destroys units through combat, those units are placed on the dragon player's board on the soul track. Every time a dragon gains three units, they collect a power from the supply bringing them closer to victory and then remove all units from their player board. Combat is carried out in the same sequences with general players. Dragon players also have the sore action allowing them to move their dragon to an adjacent region or regions connected by sea. Dragons do not need cities and regions to move across the sea. Dragon players may also take the horde action collecting one power from their region. They may collect an additional power if their region is empty. They may then heal one wound or spend a power to heal two wounds. Note that spending power does not remove power from your track. To spend a power, simply flip your power token face down, but the power still counts toward your goal of collecting 10 to win. Power is also spent on Vala cards. Each player has their own deck of Vala cards, which are unique to their faction. These cards are not played to the action stack, but instead are played when a player uses a glyph showing that action. When a player uses a Valor card, they must spend their power, so they can be quite expensive, but offer powerful, unique benefits to that player when used. When a Valor card is put into play, the active player must first pay the amount of power shown on the left side of the card flipping power tokens face down. Each player has a different set of Valor cards, giving a different feel and abilities. For example, Magnifex could play Mercurial Breath, allowing them to destroy all units in their region and then take a wound. When a Valor card is played, it is discarded to the Valor discard deck, though some Valor cards allow you to pay extra power to keep that card in hand. If your Vala deck ever runs empty, you will simply shuffle all played Vala cards and reform your Vala deck. After the resolution phase comes the cleanup phase. This only takes place if no player has gained 10 power, which would instantly win them the game. If the event deck has run empty, the game ends at this time and players count up their power and the player with the most power wins. If there are still cards in the event deck and no player has accumulated 10 power, players check their hands to make sure they have all their action cards, being sure to take region cards for any regions they control. All unclaimed upgrade cards are shuffled into the upgrade deck and six new upgrades are drawn and placed along the board. The next round now begins with the planning phase. Players will go round and round trying to collect 10 power, but in this game of generals and Dragons, at times players find that they have a better chance of winning when they team up and Generals and Dragons have the ability to form a powerful dragon bond. After resolving an action card or after your general or dragon has retreated, if your general or dragon is in the same region as another unbonded dragon or general, you may attempt a dragon bond. To attempt a dragon bond, the general and dragon player each roll a combat die. If each die rolled shows a hit, the general player and dragon player are now dragon bonded. If the roll doesn't show a hit, the general player or dragon player may spend a power to do a reroll. Either player may continue to spend power for rerolls until neither player wants to or can spend more power. If the two players become dragon bonded, they are now a team and a dragon bond cannot be broken in any way. They will exchange dragon bond tokens and place them face up on the respective player boards and flip their dragon bond cards face up and those players gain their dragon bond ability for the rest of the game. Both players will now work together attempting to earn a combined 15 power to win the game. These two players may no longer initiate combat against one another and a dragon bonded general's units are considered friendly to their dragon bonded dragon. If a dragon bonded player would gain power but they are at a maximum of 10, their power will instead go to their partner, and dragon bonded players ignore each other's pieces when collecting power. If the game ends before anyone reaches their power goal, when counting power, the player with the most counts theirs for the team, and the player with the highest power wins. When playing with less than 4 players, any factions not picked are played by faceless players, which we've talked a little bit about. Faceless players don't use Vala cards and are not given region cards. They instead only use their action cards, and to use an AI character, be sure to flip their player board to the AI side. As mentioned before, during the planning phase, the faceless plays cards randomly from their action deck, and in combat, a faceless player will never retreat if this can be avoided. The glyphs have slightly different actions when using faceless players, and players can refer to the AI side of the player board to carry out these actions, which will often center around a focus region, the region with the most power. Feel free to consult the rulebook for more information about how the faceless players work and use the player boards for descriptions of all their actions. Each faceless player also comes with a special dragon bond ability if players ever bond with them. And that's just about everything that you need to know in order to play Dragon Bond Lords of Vala. Be sure to consult the rulebook for any rules that need clarifying, and if you're looking to learn more about this game in general, be sure to check out its page at BoardGameGeek.com. And until next time, I'm Mike Murphy. I've been here with Board Game Geek, and that is how you play Dragon Bond Lords of Vala. Have a great day.